We're going to take a look now at some polar graphs. So we are not going to focus on how to graph all polar equations. Um, we're going to stop just short of that. So really what we want to explore is the relationship between a rectangular equation and its graph and a corresponding polar equation and its graph. Let's take a look at a couple of simple polar graphs first, and then we'll look at one that's maybe not quite as simple. So for the first polar graph, r equals one, again, I'm calling this simple because this is just telling me that the radius is one, which means my graph is a circle. And we'll talk about how to turn that into the equation of a circle, but obviously, hopefully we learned about the equation of a circle. We know that this, because it's centered at the pole or at the origin, would just be x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared, which would be one. Now, obviously that's not the steps that you would go through, but because this one's very simple, I didn't have to actually do any work. The second one that is simple is theta equal pi over six. So theta is equal to pi over six would be anything along the line pi over six, both in the positive and in the negative direction. And again, we could turn this into a rectangular equation and that's what we're going to look at next. So let's look at this not so simple. So these two I could graph without turning them into a rectangular equation, but five cosine theta, not quite so easy. So let's take a look at how I could turn that into a rectangular equation and therefore be able to graph it. So if you'll remember, I'm going to get rid of this guy. If you'll remember, we've been using the fact that X is equal to R cosine theta and Y is equal to R sine theta. And we also used the fact that X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. And so this is the one I'm going to start with in my not so simple example. I'm going to say, okay, well, I have r, but I really want it to be r squared because what I don't wanna to have to do is take the square root because now I have to deal with a radical and that's no fun for anybody. So what if I took this times r and this times r? Well, that would give me r squared is equal to five r cosine theta. So why is that helpful? Because now I can replace r squared with x squared plus y squared, which is helpful because I'm trying to turn this into a rectangular equation. So I want x squareds and y squareds. So I have x squared plus y squared equal to five r cosine theta. Now what can I do? Well, r cosine theta is actually equal to x. So I'm going to replace r cosine theta with x. So if I just needed to turn it into a rectangular equation, I'd be done because it didn't say that I needed to make it a nice rectangular equation. It just says a rectangular equation. And that is a rectangular equation. But I actually want to be able to graph this. So let's continue. To graph this, I would go ahead and get all of the x values to one side. So I have x squared minus 5x and then plus blank because, yep, we get to complete the square. And then plus y squared is equal to zero. So I've just moved the 5x to the other side and left myself a plus blank. Now remember that the plus blank is the b value divided by two and squared, which is 25 fourths. So that's the value that goes here and also here. So my equation, is that this entire expression can now be written as x minus 5 halves quantity squared plus y squared is equal to 25 fourths. And this is just the equation of a circle. So if this is a circle, the circle has a center of positive 5 halves comma zero and has a radius of the square root of 25 fourths, which is 5 halves. So to graph that, I would go to five halves, and then I would go five halves in each direction, which obviously is not super easy to do because I've 
I've gone off of the graph here. Um, but again, it's going to look something like that. And it would actually be a full circle. I just don't have enough room to finish that circle. Let's look at two more that don't appear to be very simple, but they actually will be much more simple than you might imagine. So again, we're going to use the fact that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. And we may or may not need the fact that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And here's why. On our last example, we had sine or cosine on the right side of our equation. And so it made perfect sense to take everything times r because I would already have an r cosine theta or an r sine theta on the right side by doing that. In this case, that would be a much more difficult approach. So what I'm going to do instead is use the fact that cosecant of theta is equal to one over sine theta and that secant of theta is equal to one over cosine of theta. So how is this going to be helpful? Well, if I replace cosecant on, let's change colors here. If I replace on the left-hand side cosecant of theta with one over sine theta, then I could take each side times sine theta. So I have r sine theta is equal to negative six. Well, r sine theta is y, so this is just y equals negative 6. So if I were asked to graph this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's my graph. But I'll just pretend I hit the 6. Same thing for this second example, r equals secant theta. I'm going to replace secant theta with 1 over cosine theta. So this is 1 over cosine theta which means r cosine theta is equal to 1. I'm going to replace r cosine theta with x, so I have x equals 1. So if I were going to graph this one, of course my graph would be that x is equal to 1. Man, I can't draw a straight line to save my life. So there is my equation. So those are the trickier examples that actually turn out to be not so tricky. You may also be asked to convert a rectangular equation into polar form. And again, to do that, it's not super tricky. We're still going to be using the fact that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. And then really it's just about doing the simplification. So to replace y, with r, sorry, r sine theta, and then I'm squaring that, and I'm replacing x with r cosine theta. And then it's just a matter of algebra. So this is going to be r squared sine squared theta, and then nine r cosine of theta. And remember, to convert this to polar form, I just want to get r by itself. So I might start here by taking each side divided by r, because obviously I have an r on each side. And that's going to get rid of one of the r's in my r squared, and also the r um, on the right side. So now I have r sine squared theta is equal to 9 cosine theta. So I'm closer, but I still don't have r by itself. So I'm going to take each side now divided by sine squared theta. And that's going to give me on the right side r. And let me go back to green here. On the left side, excuse me, I have r. And on the right side, yes, I could write 9 cosine theta over sine squared theta. But typically, we're not going to do that. Typically, we're just going to replace sine squared theta. I'm sorry, 1 over sine squared theta. Let me just put this off to the side. 1 divided by sine squared theta is equal to cosecant squared.
squared theta. So that's the way I'm going to write this, is 9 cosine theta cosecant squared theta. And that is my equation. Now, if I were asked to graph this, obviously the easiest way to graph this is to graph this in rectangular form. So this should just be a parabola that's obviously turned on its side um, because the y is squared and not the x. So we're not going to go through that graph. I'm going to assume that you can do that. Let's move on to our very last video of Calculus 2, which is to find the slope and tangent lines of polar equations.